I swear to God, this is a true story. I ate about 10 White Castles, okay? okay? The next day, I was so sick, I couldn't hardly breathe. I then I had to get up and catch a plane and go to Philadelphia to do a signing mm. uh, with Joe Goodhart, I think. Uh, Bill, is that his yeah. name? Yeah, yeah. Joel, okay, yeah, I had to go and, and brother, I just had that sign and I had to get up out of my chair like every other minute going to the bathroom. <laughs> Drew McIntyre, good Lord. Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins appears to be an upcoming WrestleMania match. And the big question on a lot of fans' minds, you know, after Seth and Drew McIntyre have met so many times before, is this match... WrestleMania worthy. Well, it, it to me it's not there. They're supposed to meet. They are going to meet at WrestleMania, and I think my answer to your question is absolutely because we are looking at a different Drew McIntyre and a different Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is not in the physical condition that he would have been the last few times they met. He is having problems with his back, especially. Drew McIntyre at this point is hungrier than I've ever seen him before. He wants Seth Rollins and he wants to win that title. And I think this match is going to be uh, mainly Drew McIntyre in charge in this match. And I see Drew McIntyre winning the World Heavyweight Championship oh. this time around from Seth frickin' Rollins, no matter how hard Seth frickin' tries. Teddy, what do you think? Well, I'd have to say this. Uh, you know, at the beginning, I heard you mention, you know, that, that Drew has wrestled Seth so many times and he's come up on the short end each time. But what a lot of people don't understand is each time each other, those two men get inside the ring with each other, they learn. They learn each other's moves. They learn each other's weaknesses. They learn each other's, you know, where, where, they may make, where the other one would make a mistake. So they've had the opportunity to study each other. They've had the opportunity to learn the ins and out of each other. So I think that Drew McIntyre understands very well now this has to be it. And I think he's going to do everything that he possibly can to come out on top, in which I, I kind of agree with Bill. I believe he will come out on top because I think he's found something and he's seen something in Seth Rollins there that he knows he can conquer. And it does appear that uh, Drew McIntyre has truly uh, changed into a more heel character that I, he kind of bounces on that line, Bill. He kind of goes... He's a he's a bad guy, yet he has a reason for being a bad guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I absolutely know what you're saying because right now his whole attitude is amped up like I've never seen it before. It's taken years. And remember, a lot of the matches, there have been a lot of interference from uh, coming in from uh, the, the bloodline from the Judgment Day. So this has got to be hopefully with no disruptions whatsoever all right let's talk about another match uh that it looks like uh, we might be, be seeing soon and that would be randy orton and logan paul <clears throat> after recent events that took place at the uh at the elimination chamber premium live event where randy orton first of all let me just say when i saw this match i legitimately and i'm still not even sure thought that Randy Orton damaged his back. Uh, he, If he was selling, it was one of the best sale jobs I have seen in quite some time because I legitimately felt like he had hurt himself. And if he didn't, kudos to you, brother, because that was really good. But it looks like Logan Paul coming out, you know, and it uh, costing Randy Orton that chamber match. Randy Orton and Logan Paul. Bill, what do you think? Oh, I think, right. I don't know if Randy's hurt, but again, uh, if he was hurt, uh, that pain was real. But Logan Paul with the brass knuckles and the whole thing with AJ Styles involved, etc. Um, Logan Paul deserves the wrath of Randy Orton. And if anyone, because I picked Randy Orton to walk out of that elimination chamber to win that match. But the wrath of Randy Orton is something that... No, no one in the ring uh, 
would look forward to suffering, so to say. And that championship, that U.S. championship that Logan Paul has around his waist, if he goes against Randy Orton at WrestleMania, that United States championship is going to go on the Apex Predators waist. Teddy, what do you think? Well, uh, <clears throat> at the beginning, you know, we we're talking about the cell job with Randy Orton. Well, here's what I want to say about that. And I hope uh, it was bad. I hope Randy's not hurt because Randy certainly don't need no more injuries. But if this is a cell job, then I want to say this to every wrestler, except there's a few there in WWE. You need to pay attention because this is how you sell. This is how you make people believe. And if you don't make them believe in you, then you don't sell tickets. It's just that simple. So if that was a sale job, then I, I, then ladies and uh, boys and girls, y'all please sit down and uh, look at that and learn how to sell. And it'll really help you out because you need to be able to make the people believe in you. Yes, so, and, and uh, more so, and like what Randy does, Randy carried that sales job, if that's what it was, all the way to the back. And you that's something I see a lot of guys make a mistake. They'll sell in the ring, and then once the match is over, suddenly they can walk a little better. They don't seem as hurt as they did a second and ago. Shake, and, and shaking hands, hitting hands, you know, hitting yeah. the fans' hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 you're hurt. If you're hurt, you're hurt. Stay hurt. That's, right. that's, that's Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. And I do think that the Logan Paul and Randy Orton match will be uh -huh. a great match. That's one I am looking forward to because I think, you know, you know how Logan Paul is. Logan Paul gives everything he's got in every match I've ever seen him in. He just goes out of his way to steal yeah. the show. And I love that. And he's working with the right guy, Randy Orton, yes. okay? He's with the right guy. They both will make each other look like a million dollars. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure if either one of you, I haven't asked you this question uh, off camera yet, but I'm curious, did you get a chance to see the Randy Orton special on A&E? It was magnificent. It was oh, great. incredible. It was one of my, the production of it, the honesty. Brutal honesty. It, uh, all of it was just brilliantly done. The, the whole a uh, and &E and WWE crew meshing together to put that show together was absolutely fabulous. And they didn't hold anything back. No. Randy talked about his addiction. He talked about his family issues. Uh, it was it was perfect. It was just a great documentary. Yeah, for him to even acknowledge the uh, anger management that he had to go through and uh, the amount of pills that he was taking at one time was just unbelievable. Hard to believe that he still is alive today after you hear what he talks about. Again, if you haven't had a chance, A&E is a fantastic program. And it is, every time we have these shows that come out from A&E, it comes out like once or twice a year, I guess. Mm -hmm. No, Just no, somebody. it's now an entire, there's a whole set of, a, I think, about a half a dozen of them uh, every Sunday, starting uh, when we're taping this at the very end of February. And it's just fantastic programming. It, it always is, always Randy is. Randy Orton, though, no matter his issues or anything that's been going on with him, physically and mentally, I've never seen him better in yes. his ring career. Teddy, one thing I've noticed about Randy Orton is he smiles a lot more than he used to, and it looks like he actually means that smile. He's not forcing a smile. At one time, he would have to force a smile. Randy Orton today looks like, and like I think what Bill was referring to, he looks better, healthier. He looks more in tune with what he, where he should have been all these years. He just looks like he's in a great spot right now. Yeah, well, you know, he's got the clouds out of his head. You know what I mean? Everything's clear now. I know you worked with him quite a bit because I even saw a clip today where uh, he RKO'd somebody and you were sitting in the ring and you quickly got out of the ring before he got to you. Uh, was there ever uh, any times that you and Randy worked together that you can recall? Any stories? Oh, yeah. We, well, I've, I've known Randy when they first brought him in, when he first come into the territory and uh, well, come into Vince. And a uh, uh, little story, one time I, uh, we, uh, we was at a T in St. Louis, we was in Randy's hometown. Yeah. And so I had to do the dark match and the dark match was the match between Randy Orton and somebody. But anyway, before I got ready to do the dark match, uh, Randy had, had his own bus. So I went out on the bus, you know, and sit back and relax with Randy and got ready to, to get ready to come in. So that me and him just friends, okay? So yeah. I come back in, we get ready, we go out, we do the dark match. So I go out to introduce him. When I introduce him, I, now he's in St. Louis, he's in his hometown, okay? The people, yeah. they already know him. But I, you know, I'm just be having a good time. I said, ladies and gentlemen, 
He's the Viper, the legend killer. I think I gave him about two or three names or something. And then I finally introduced him. And then, you know, everybody popped and laughed. So I thought I did a good job there. And I walked right back through the curtain. Vince was standing up. He was waiting on me. He said, uh -oh. Come here. <laughs> and he looks at me and he says, you're in business for yourself out there? I said, no. And the next thing he says to me, he says, well, God damn it. They know who he is. He lives here. They know he's a legend killer. They know. And, and so I just stopped right then. And I said, I said, sir, I said, I was playing. I said, I'll just be straight up. And I said, but I guarantee you that'll never happen again. And his last words to me was, says, yeah, God damn it. You're better than that. Wow. <laughs> I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm going to put a, uh, uh, I'm so old. Go ahead. Ask me. How old are you, Bill? Well, I'm not going to say it, but I'm so old that one of my favorite tag teams was Bob Orton Sr. and Nature Boy Buddy Rogers. Oh, wow. Yeah, they were the, the grandfather, Bob Orton Sr. Yep. When I was growing up, in the uh, when I was a kid in the uh, 60s, uh, they were a regular tag team, the big old Bob Orton and Buddy Rogers. So I got to see and meet and know the grandfather, the father, Bob Orton, Cowboy mm -hmm. Bob Orton, yep. and Randy Orton. So I've seen all three generations of them, and they're all like so exceptional in the ring. It's just so natural that he would have this inborn talent. Yeah. And you, by the way, uh, if you'd like to meet Bob Orton uh, Jr., he will be at the SICW Fan Fest, which comes up in May, uh, May 17th and 18th. Get your tickets now. Uh, that's And that's, of course, again, we'll be in St. Louis. And uh, that is a, a hotbed of wrestling from uh, back in the day. And uh, Herb Simmons uh, is also another historian from that area that runs a lot of these events and does a great job. So if you want to meet some of these names, Make plans to join us at the SICW Fan Fest in May. Go to SICW.org. I want to find out if Cowboy Bob Orton, if that arm has healed or if he's still got the cast on it. <laughs> Teddy, did you ever work uh, with Bob Orton Jr.? Oh, yeah. I worked with him uh, back in WCW. I worked with him and uh, also rode with him, too. I had a lot of fun. And he, and he, now see that smile tells me i need to ask you if there was a story there anywhere <laughs> i remember one time let's say it was me and him um we 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 smoking so we had smoked so much one night so we was hungry so we go to the what in the what was it now new? when he says smoke he's not talking cigarettes oh i he's thought he was talking about marlboro <laughs> so you're not just, you, they, they know you're not the studio <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we anyway that night we we was real hungry, so we go to White Castle. So brother, mm -hmm. we have, I think that night I ate Billy about. Palmers. I swear to God, this is a true story. I ate about ten White Castles. Okay, oh. the next day I was so sick I couldn't hardly breathe. I then I had to get up, catch a plane, and go to Philadelphia to do a signing mm. uh, with Joe Goodhart. I think uh, Bill is that his yeah. name? Yeah. Yeah. Joel, okay, yeah, I had to go and do, and brother, I just had that sign and I had to get up out of my chair like every other minute going to the bathroom. <laughs> I did. I ate ten White Castles, man. Yeah, they oh. they had at that time it was you can get a dozen of them for like three dollars. Oh, they, brother, we had, a, told, we had a, we had a hundred of them. I always told my kids they were the best worst hamburgers in the world. They were <laughs> the I, I, I mean, I'm, ones. And I'll be honest, I still eat them to this day because you can find them in the grocery stores in the frozen section, yeah. and you can buy them and put them in the microwave, and within 60 seconds, you've got some hot White Castles. And they're real. Yeah. Does oh, Crystal Burger still exist down there? Because that it was does. the other one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I, Crystal and White Castle, if there's a difference, I don't really know what it is because they both taste the same to me. The, the name. Equally <laughs> the, name. <laughs> the name, that's all. 